Earth is fantastically beautiful. On this channel, we have mainly focused on planets in our solar system and have seen spectacular flyovers of the Moon and Mars. But our endeavor to discover and understand new worlds may have meant that we have neglected what is probably the most beautiful planet that we know of. Our home. And after some of the views I'm about to show you, I'm a little worried that you may never want to look at another planet again. I'm Alex McColgan, and you're watching Astrum. And in this first episode, we will look at some of the most spectacular mountains in the Middle East, with real time lapses seen from the perspective of the International Space Station. And I will explain the context to these images to give you a true appreciation for what it is you are looking at. Let's start with an impressive look at some of the mountain ranges either side of the Red Sea. We are orbiting Earth at an altitude of roughly 350 kilometers, currently heading in a southwardly direction with Egypt to our left and Saudi Arabia to our right. It may seem like we are only looking at a small area, but in reality, this view is 400 kilometers across. The mountains to our right are the Sarawat Mountains, a large range that covers over 180,000 square kilometers and rises well above 3,000 meters. You'll notice riverbeds running down the mountains. Although these riverbeds are dry in this video, this range sees the most rain in the whole Arabian Peninsula. They just tend to get it all in one go. Have a look at this enormous crater here. This is not an impact crater, but rather the remnants of a volcanic crater. This whole region is actually formed from volcanic activity, with some volcanoes still being active today. These white dots here are not a city, but rather a huge cement factory. Just under these clouds is the famous city of Mecca. And just overlooking it are some fantastic mountains and winding roads. As you can see, this area is extremely arid, although in other parts of the mountains, vegetation can be found. Let's speed up our journey a bit now, heading towards the tip of the peninsula. On the far right is the edge of the Arabian Desert with its famous Sif or longitudinal dunes. These dunes stretch for hundreds of kilometers around the Arabian Peninsula, following the direction of the wind, which is a constant in this area. Seen just at the border of the desert and the mountains seems to be a scar in the landscape. This is not a valley as it may appear, but a raised ridge with a sand dune following along the side of it. You can just about see a dam with its reservoir by here, and to the east of the dam, in the middle of the sand, is a farming town. The harsh environments humans can grow crops astounds me. Also found in this region is Jabal and Nabi Shuaib, the tallest mountain on the Arabian Peninsula reaching 3,700 meters tall. Let's start heading west from here now. Underneath us is the east side of the Arabian Desert, individual sief dunes just about visible from this angle. The Euphrates and the Tigris rivers are flowing from the north towards the Persian Gulf in the south. You can see how these rivers visibly nourish the ground of Iraq, with most of Iraq's towns and settlements found within this region. This is known as an alluvial plain, a flat region of land where these rivers have flooded over time, creating fertile soil. Beyond Iraq and to the left, you see the mountain range running through Georgia and Azerbaijan, separating Europe and Asia, called the Caucasus Mountains. 
These mountains are the result of a tectonic plate collision between the Arabian plate moving northwards into the Iranian plate, folding the ground upwards into the peaks you see today under the pressure. Found in this range is the highest peak in Europe, Mount Elbrus, which reaches 5,642 meters tall. Unlike most of what we've seen today, this area is lush in vegetation, and the mountains feed hundreds of glaciers into the valleys below. In stark contrast to these green mountains all in a line, in Iran, to our right, we have an almost surreal looking set of mountains. Surreal because the peaks are poking out of the cloud cover or fog. These are all part of the same range, called the Zagros Mountains. As you can see, they are vast, spanning 1,600 kilometers in length. Let's have a closer look at what makes these mountains so interesting. These mountains were also formed due to plate tectonics, although in a different process to the Caucasus Mountains we looked at earlier. One big visible difference you'll notice is that the vast region has linear mountains, but not just in a single row, but rather it has many peaks and troughs like corrugated iron. The fault that these mountains formed on is called a fold and thrust belt, through collisions with the Arabian plate moving into the Iranian plate. But let's zoom out to the wide-angle view again. If this is all the Zagros Mountains, then why do these mountains in the south look so different to the ones in the north? This is due to it being comprised of different types of rock. In the south, sedimentary layers are deforming over a rock salt layer meaning folding happens a lot easier in this type of rock, whereas to the north, the rock salt layer is either very thin or missing altogether. The rock layer that does exist here is not as ductile or plastic as the rock salt, meaning the landscape is only deformed along a much narrower band along the fault line. Interestingly, it is around the parts of the exposed rock salt layer that most of Iran's oil reserve is found as the salt structures are impermeable, meaning vast pockets of oil can be retained. Salt domes and glaciers can be exposed to the surface, and I must say they form some of the most bizarre landscapes I've ever seen of Earth. They are visible from space. Here is a giant dome 14 kilometers across. And here are some salt glaciers. Yes, these structures flow down into the valley in a similar fashion to a water ice glacier on Earth. A close-up inspection of the salt shows layering and erosion from the rain. And looking out over the landscape shows an otherworldly view. The Zagros Mountains to the north are a lot more normal looking, but that's not to say they aren't beautiful in their own right. Beyond the Zagros Mountains, but just before the coast of the Caspian Sea, we can see a lake called Lake Ermia. This lake used to be the largest lake in the Middle East, and the sixth largest saltwater lake in the world, with a surface area of 5,200 square kilometers. However, since the 1980s it has shrunk to only 10% of its former size, as dams have stopped the flow of rivers into the lake, if the lake ever dries up completely, this could adversely affect the climate in the area, and plans are in motion to refill it. Next to the lake though is an old volcano, which is easily visible against the lighter colored ground around it. But zooming out a bit, we see that this volcano is tiny in comparison to this mammoth, known as Sahan, at 3,707 meters tall. This means that even though it is found in the Middle East, it's tall enough for there to be a ski resort on it during the winter. Heading further east, we come to another range of mountains bordering the Caspian Sea, 
called the Alborz Mountains. As you can see, Iran is actually a very mountainous country. And although we have such a wide field of view from this shot, the largest mountain in Iran, Damavand, is easily visible. Just south of it is the capital of Iran, Tehran. But let's have a closer look at Damavand. This impressive volcano is the tallest in Asia, at 5,609 meters. And it is still active, although it hasn't seen an eruption in an estimated 8,000 years. Although it hasn't erupted for so long, it's considered active because it emits sulfur regularly. It even has a volcanic crater at the top. And what's really impressive about this volcano is how high it rises in comparison to anything around it. The Alborz Mountains make an impressive sight for those living in Tehran too, rising high above the city with snow-capped peaks. Moving beyond Iran, we start to leave the Middle East, and also the scope of this video. Are you like me, stuck somewhere without an internet connection and wishing you had something interesting to do while offline? Brilliant's offline courses may be just the thing you are looking for. Brilliant offers dozens of downloadable interactive courses through the iOS mobile app, with which you'll be able to solve fascinating problems in math, science and computer science, no matter where you are or how spotty your internet connection. These courses are all interactive. You can be like the ancient Greeks, working out the size of the Earth. Use rockets to model algebraic functions and discover how stars are formed. So, if you want to support Astrum and get unlimited access to all of Brilliant's in-depth math and science courses, you can head over to brilliant.org forward slash Astrum to get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the sights of our beautiful planet from a few different perspectives. A big thank you to Sean Doran for helping acquire some of these stunning time lapses you saw today. Check out his channel for more here. Thank you as well to my patrons and those of you that like and share my videos. It really helps support the channel. All the best and see you next time.